I think I want to start with, now what we're going to do is, gentlemen and ladies, you'll have two minutes to speak first. Now, after everyone has spoken, we will then throw this open and make it as conversational as possible. So let me start with uh, Binga Adeyinka, the first. Um, just speak to your key points on this issue. Okay, uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, for me, uh, talent has always been, the way I see talent is, talent must be used as a tool for social re-engineering. And that's why I'm happy we're talking about ta using talent, the talent industry, to rebuild Nigeria. A lot of times, we, we, we forget, like someone said earlier, that talent is not enough. A lot of times, we, we complain in the industry that banks are not doing enough, the government is not doing enough. Um, we keep striving and striving. We try to get bank loans. We do, they tell us, go and do this and that and that. But for me, a few years back, I sat down and asked myself, OK, these people keep saying, bring this, bring that, bring this. And government is not doing enough. Why don't we try in our own little way to do our part and make it impossible for them to say they won't do what they're supposed to do. So I decided, okay, let's register a company. Let's, let's um, get an accountant. Let's pay taxes. Let's go, let's ask for everything. Because a couple of years ago, there was something like this organized on a smaller uh, scale. We were with the governor of Lagos State and the, the, the question people asked is, Oga, why don't you go and close Alaba? Everybody knows that Alaba is the biggest pirate market, if not in sub-Saharan Africa. And he said, I would love to close Alaba. But on a daily basis, we get so, 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 so amount of tax from Alaba. If I close Alaba because of the entertainment industry, how much tax am I going to get from you? So for me, a lot of people might not like this, but I think we need to get our acts together. together. We need to restructure our businesses. What we do is show business. The business is even longer than the show. And we have to get our acts together mm. and make sure we do things right. Uh, ab absolutely, I agree with you. And um, I mean, you've just talked about structure. There's no question at all that um, structure is a very big problem in this part of the world. If you talk about talent, talents abound. It's just like when you say the best uh, football talents in this country come from Ajegunle. But, you know, in terms of structure, you don't have it. And you have that problem with uh, the entertainment industry. So, um, Falari, you have your two minutes. And um, please fire on. All right. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to make mine very brief, uh, as brief as possible. Looking at talent, especially in the music and in the movie industry, as well as comedy. Talent has always been a tool of entertainment. Now, that aspect of, of life, that vital part of life, which is entertainment, will always continue to be vital, especially in these trying times. You know, the economy is facing a downtime. So that entertainment will always continue to be vital. So we entertainers will always continue to be very important in these times. So I think my message or my concern will be with the government. Now, it's very important that the government sees this and try as much as possible to come up with ways to invest in the entertainment industry and find a way to channel the, the nation's resources into that industry and, you know, make that, you know, literally be the hope of the economy. Now, for example, there are some state governments that are already organizing carnivals, you know, festivals yearly, these are, you know, events that could make Nigeria that entertainment capital that tourists want to visit every now and then. You know, I think these, these are very important things. But I find that our government, very often than not, is more interested in what they could sort of collect from the industry. Now, what I've realized, I came to discover that there's a bill that is about to be passed. There's a bill that is about to be passed. It's, it's called the Mopicon Bill. 
I know a lot of entertainers don't even know about this, but it's very important that we are sensitized about this because it concerns every one of us. Now, the bill aims to establish a motion picture practitioners um, council. Now, this bill seems to suggest that before you can do anything that has to do with motion picture that would involve music videos, films, of course, you'd have to be registered as a motion picture practitioner. Now, that is ridiculous because you're trying to tell me that even if I have my phone and I want to record a video and put up on YouTube, because that is motion picture, I can't do that. I have to register with some sort of council. That is absurd. There is nowhere in the world that that happens. You know, so I think the government should rather than try trying to regulate or, or put in these unnecessary you know, rules, find a way to invest in the entertainment industry and help the economy. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, Falana. Uh, it's okay. It's okay. Um, uh, the fact is that, you know, sometimes when there's no structure in the industry, and if the industry cannot organize itself, whether you like it or not, someone would have to organize that industry for itself. So maybe that's what uh, the government is trying to do with the Mopcom bill. I, I'm, I'm just, you know, playing the devil's advocate here. But, you know, fact is that there is no structure in the industry. There's no proper uh, organization. And um, if somebody somewhere is saying, look, you need to have that structure and that in the long run, that structure will benefit everyone in the industry, then maybe we should begin to look at it from another perspective. But um, let, me, let me give you the opportunity to have your two minutes, please. All right, my name is Kyle Delo. And for me, if entertainment is going to be a form of um, thing we'll look at and say we want to have our economy depend on it, then I'd rather want to see that um, we look at what the definition of talent is and then look at it as regards to what we have in our society. If you're going to um, probably ask anybody for the definition of talent, it has that keyword of rare skill or something that you wouldn't find, I mean, just like that. These days, when you go online, what most often we refer to as talent is just based on the number of views or based on whatever it is the person is enjoying at that point in time. And if we are ever going to build the economy using the entertainment industry as a tool, then I think we should probably be building for the long run. We shouldn't be building for the fact that, okay, this guy is the rave of the moment, and that's why I want him to be at every show and all that. What it means is the day the guy stops um, performing well, then that's the end. You're back to zero. And for any economy to grow, it's not supposed to focus on what is temporary. It's supposed to focus on what's permanent. And that will probably start from our definition of talent. It should be that rare thing. You, if you sit 100 people down, maybe you find it in two, three, five people. Not the same thing you find with someone you find in there. The only reason why Faust is here and everybody is clap, clapping and um, applauding is because he didn't come again to say, okay, yes, I have one funny line and all that. He owned that thing that made you always want to go back to his Instagram page to look at it. And for me, that's talent. And that's the only thing you can use if at all entertainment is going to be used to build the economy. It has to be something that is for the long run. Okay, Funke, I'm going to come, come to you. you. You just spoke not quite long ago, but let me go to Bovi. Um, yes, Bovi, let's have your two minutes. All right, thank you. Um, first of all, let me start by saying, when we talk about growing this industry or rebuilding the entertainment industry, what stares us in the face more is the problems rather than the solutions. Um, we've, talk about, we've talked about the role of government in all of this. Um, the Mopicon bill he talked about, that's major. Is it a step in the right direction? Only time will tell. But is the timing right? It's absolutely wrong. I have said it over and over again. There are certain things that need to be done, and we just need to break it down. We have 774 local governments in Nigeria. How do we help all these talents? The, the, the length entertainment has grown in Nigeria when you check it's more than 90 percent of the private sector what has been the role of the government is it just to regulate us or regulate the bodies the answer is no 
We have local governments. 774. We have 36 states. What is the government doing? We have a Ministry of Arts and Culture. What are they doing? The last big festival we heard of was Festac 77. How many of us were born dead? That, these, are the, these are the facts that are staring us in the face. There is a limit to how much the private companies, how much the individuals can do. We have programs, we shoot on TV, we have musical videos, we employ people for those jobs, but those are ad hoc jobs because once the job is done, they go back. Now everybody has a phone, everybody has access to YouTube, you can make videos, and now you want to regulate it rather than encourage it. It's just crazy. That's, that's how I see it. Now, even if you cannot build a center in every local government, even if you can't build a center in every local government, what about the states? There are just 36 states. Everybody cannot live in Lagos. Everybody cannot have access to... Um, what do these people, they give money? Um, the bank. Bank of industry. Everybody cannot have access to them. Basically, we need to spread. We need to decentralize. That's how I see it. That's what will take us forward. We, there was cultism in every school at its peak. And then we had access to the internet. Before people started to make videos, everybody was going into Yahoo. And now everybody's making short videos. Boys have made a living from their Instagram. They get paid to advertise and all. How do we make this thing reach the rural areas? That's what the government should think about. Senators are having issues now. A vehicle costing 30 million naira. 30 million naira will build one entertainment center okay. in every local government. Okay. Okay, your, your two minutes is up. But I, we also have to understand that um, I'm not speaking for the government that this bill we're talking about, as a matter of fact, is an initiative of, um, you know, people like you. It, it, it's an initiative, yeah. Now, the, the reason why, hold on, the reason why you may not be aware of it, or the reason why some of us may not be aware of how this bill came about is just because there's no structure. We don't belong to any organization at all. Sorry. But, but sorry. Uh, hold on, I'm hold on. Sorry. Hold on. I'm the mother. There's, there's a structure, but the structure is comatose. Yeah, exactly. We have because, a Ministry of Arts and Culture. Yeah, if it's... Do you get... It's okay. There is a structure. Now, if the structure is comatose, why is it comatose? Something is responsible for it. But, Dario, please. Your two minutes. Okay. Um, since I'm the one with the least talent here, I would... Of course not. <laughs> um, I'll first speak to the guys who, to the audience who um, have talent, who think they're artists or comedians and stuff, and I'll say to them to first take ownership, right? The best the government can give you is give you an enabling environment, right? The government is not going to come and put music in the hand of me, who monetizes content. That, the government is never going to do that. How are you taking ownership? I see someone still handing over CDs to me outside to say, listen to my music. It's the internet of things. I mean, the cost you use to produce one CD, you can buy 10 MB of data. And do you see the reach? I, I, I mean, it's logic, right? So if you buy 10 MB of data and you load your music online, you are reaching thousands of people, but you are giving me one CD that costs that 100 naira, and it's just me, and I'm not going to listen to it because I, I don't listen to CDs. So you need to move with the trend. It's digital. It's a digital age. I mean, we have Cloud9. We have, I won't call my competitors. I, I'll call my friends. We have my music. I see them in the crowd. So there are a lot of people who, who can do these things for you, and it's accessibility as well. These things don't cost anything. Right, so you come to a Cloud9 or you come to a My Music, and we'll put your music up, and it's left to you to market your content, and then we take notice of such things, and then we promote for you. Right, the the second thing I would, which is a general problem, which I see because I'm on the side of monetization, right, is data analytics and reporting. That is one of the major issues facing the industry. Um, I'll I'll speak to files, for instance. If I gave you a report showing where your music was being heard or where your music wasn't being heard, 
for instance, um, in Kaduna in a specific state or in a specific region, and I say, guys, your music is not heard here, you would make efforts to want to do shows there. You would make efforts to want to, you know, push your content in that area. But we lack that kind of data, and that's what we are trying to do as brands, as Cloud9, and as a telco, as a Tesalat in general, is to put data in the hands of the consumers so that they are able to monetize their own content. Thank you. Well, a good point. I mean, I have heard that over and over again, that, you know, all you just need to do to solve some of your problems, if you have that talent, just uh, pick up a camera, for instance, record yourself and put it out there. Just put it on the internet and, you know, the explosion would come. But fact is that it doesn't always happen that way because it's not as easy as that. So if, for instance, you found some people still carrying their CDs about and, and giving to a couple of people, it's just because they just hope that by chance they just might be able to come across someone who would help them. Because sometimes you put this thing out there on the internet, you know, it, it's so huge, you just get lost. You just get lost. But that is not in any way to disprove what you're saying at all. Um, Timmy. Yes, I would, I would speak from the angle of, of talent. Um, people are saying government put money into this, put money into this. But I think we don't have that kind of structure. If I'm an investor and I'm a neutral person, I can't put my money into nothing and say, paraventure, it, it would yield. It would yield money. So I would speak that if you are talented, you know you are talented in a specific field. Get to know Get to know the business side of how to make money out of your talent. It's, it's not about singing and putting it into CDs. Know the, the nitty gritty, what makes, what makes music music, what makes comedy comedy, what makes a punchline punchline in comedy. And you can monetize it from there. People, I don't think talent hides that much. If you have it and you show it long enough, be consistent. Even in this industry, people have told me like, see me, all this your Oibo song you're singing, you're not going to go very well. I've been told that, but I knew what, the reason why I, said, I told somebody I had to go to school for this thing, because the only thing I knew about music before now was go to school, go to choir practice Wednesday and Sunday, learn my tenor part, shout it on Sunday, continue it the next week. But when I wanted to take this thing serious, I started to learn it for myself. The knowledge you have cannot be taken away from The knowledge you have about your talent it cannot be taken away from you. So let's not sit down here and be lazy waiting for somebody to give us money, waiting for somebody to give us grants and passing cities along. I don't think, see, it's in another form, they said it's a city that is set on a hilltop, it cannot be hidden for long. It cannot be hidden at all. Know your trade, know your talent, know how you can sit down. The thing, behind, the thing between our ears is, is our brain. You can use it. Don't just sit down there and just say, oh, I'm waiting for somebody to sign me. Sing, do your thing until somebody does. Let's, let's, let's leave this whole government structure thing. As if I'm, if I'm government, I'm not, I'm not going to put my money into nothing. I must want, if I'm, if I'm, if I'm an organization like MTN right now, I cannot put my money into something because I'm here for profit. I'm not here to come and shake your hand and say, that song was sweet. Because me as, an human, as, as someone... I cannot be going for charity shows like always, 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 always. I need to pay fees. You understand what I'm trying to say? So let us look at enhance your talent up until the point where you'll not be ignored and then you'll be paid for it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Fact is that, as you said, Timmy, look, if an investor was going to come to invest in something, there has to be a structure on the ground. If there's no structure on the ground, if I cannot identify something and hold on to that thing, it surely would be difficult for me to put my money into that thing. So, fact is, the industry has got to uh, fix itself first. Uh, Joyce. Um, good afternoon, everybody. I'm going to speak concerning what Timmy just talked about right now. You, there are two... Can you just project, please? Okay, sorry. There are actually two... Um, factors I'm going to look at. One of them is education. That's one thing that's lacking in, the, in Nigeria right now. We have a lot of talent, but nobody's harnessing this, this um, talent that we do have. Everybody's told to go to school. But if you have a talent in, let's say, music, how do you go learn about the music? 
everybody goes to go learn this admin, medicine, and all these other things. But there is no proper school for music management. I know it took me three years to find a school outside Nigeria where I could go read entertainment management. We don't have those kind of things in Nigeria. That is one thing that the government should be looking at, setting up schools for people with talent. Another thing I also want to talk, talk about is um, social consciousness. Now, America is one place that we all love. Everybody wants to go there because everybody feels like the streets are actually paved of gold. But if you haven't been there, for those people that have been there, you know it is not true. Why do people feel that America is like this? This is what America, Hollywood, has sold to the world. Nigeria, we can actually have that by Nollywood and music. We are already doing it, but on a low, uh, smaller scale. We can do this on a larger scale. Like, for, um, for instance, the band has been a better um, ambassador for Nigeria than the past than the three foreign commissioners, foreign ambassadors that we've had, actually. The band has done more work for Nigeria than they have. He has projected Nigeria in a better way. I go to different countries and people are asking me, do you know Funke Akedile? Do you know this person? Do you know that person? Nobody's asking me, do you know my, your ambassador? Nobody's asking me anything else because these people have, in their own way, portrayed Nigeria in a good light. Now, if the government were to use those people to portray things that they want to sell to the world, it will make a lot of sense that all screaming here and talking about passing any bill. Thank you. All right. Um, Funke. Okay. Um, I support almost everything everyone said here. For me, I said it earlier on, structure matters. How many of we celebrities have lawyers? good managers and offices, like I said, you know. Um, what of our websites? How big are we online, aside Instagram and tweeting? You know, when they search for our names, what have we done to, to change the lives of the up and coming ones, you know? How have we impacted positively into their lives? What can they see that we've given back to the society? So, in all, I just want us to work harder. Together as a team, there's no one bigger than the other. There's nothing like, ah, no, Bobby style is different from Jennifer style. What is it? Ah, Faust, ah, I started this uh, bad English thing. Now, why did Faust just come? No, he wants to take my shine. No, we all have talent and we have to come together. And we should help the up and coming ones get there. Do not wait for the government, please. They will look for you. When I started Jennifer's Diary, before I shot the pilot, I went to an agency. I won't mention the agency. And I sat down, I was selling it. And this, blah, 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 blah. the proposal was there. I was just scrolling up and down. The man said, where is your pilot? Just because I have Jennifer the movie, I feel, okay, the movie will sell the series. I had to go back to shoot six episodes, edit and start selling, marketing it all over again before I could get adverts on Jennifer's Diary. And today is huge. It's on Iroko TV and they keep calling for more seasons. Online you can see where season four, where season four, where season four. So your jobs will speak for you. Keep pushing, do it well. Then watch what you sign. Don't just feel, oh, I have this talent. Funke Akinele has called me. Our management coming. Sign seven years. You'll be giving you 50K every month. No. And like Joy said, education is important. Illiteracy is a disease. Get to know. And we celebrities acquire more knowledge. Okay? Thank you. Well, um, Benga, let me ask you this. Um, there's no question at all that talents abound in this country. I mean, whether it's sports, music, entertainment, what have you, talents abound. But one of the big problems we have, and perhaps the biggest, is that we've just not been able to manage the talent in such a way that these talents will begin to make so much for us, even when the talents, because whether you like it or not, at some point the talents will appear to be, you know, be waning sort of, but that even when the talent appears to be dying, you've been able to establish a structure you know, that keeps you going. Now, I ask this question in a context. I'll give you an, a typical example, and I want you to answer, you know, along that context. And we all know, for instance, 
There's this musician back then called Daddy Fresh. This is by no means taking any aim at him at all. Daddy Fresh, wonderful talent. Golden voice of our Golden gentleman. voice. But where is Daddy Fresh today? It's not as if the voice isn't there. The voice is still there. Some time ago, I met him at Ajigunle and he was singing somewhere. The voice is still there, but somehow there was not proper management of that talent. You see, this all falls back to what maybe practically everybody has said, which is um, structure, doing things right. I don't believe that government should do this for you. I believe that we should all individually build our structures like my brother said own your own your your property and like my aunt who always tell me i'll say this in yoruba we, there's still entertainers who collect money for shows in cash put it in their cars spend it and next week they go to the bank and the bank says, so how much are you worth? And they say, oh, I, I make about 10 million every month. And they say, show me. And there's no record. Everything has to be documented. Everything has to be done right. When in Nigeria, something new will always come. Tomorrow, Faust, let me disappoint you. There will be Faust, the good guy. Whether you like it or not. That's true. But what have you done as Fowls, the bad guy? Have you monetized enough? Have you built enough structure? Hopefully, in the past, a lot of them, Daddy Fresh, didn't have it. There was no MTN color, color tune. There was no um, Awai, or Wei, or, or Huawei, or they know they are one way. There was none of that. But you see, this generation is lucky. You have no reason to fail. But you see, we would also fail if we plan to fail. We keep doing things. If you keep doing things the way somebody else has done it, if you keep staying in Lagos and you believe that Lagos is a hub, once I make it in Lagos, I've made it all over Nigeria. Okay. Explore other markets. Do new things. And, and uh, talking about exploring other markets, uh, Bovi, I want you to share your experience. You have, uh, I don't know if, uh, maybe I'm wrong, but I think you have something very important you do, uh, that you've been able to export your comedy be beyond the shows of Nigeria. Your Man on Fire show, it's, it's a great export, whether or not we like it. And, you know, whether we like it or not, it's, it's making money and, uh, you know, uh, can you just share from your own experience what actually... Um, what encouraged you to do this? And in, in terms of um, monetary value now, like, is, is it something that you would encourage other comedians, you, you know, to be looking at? Because th there is so much opportunity in there. Um, before I tackle your question, I would like to say something. I think we have uh, different versions of what we think a structure should be. When we talk about structure, there are pockets of structure in the entertainment industry. But then, it's like a pyramid that stops halfway. How does it get to the apex? The apex body is supposed to make, like he said, an enabling environment. Many of us here have reached our peak as individuals. Oh, really? Funke is a movie maker. But Funke doesn't have one billion naira to invest in a movie. That's the average budget for a Hollywood picture. So where's the structure? That's why the government has a case to answer. Okay, but go on. Yeah, go on. I, I started to sell my crafts. I, I, I honed my skills. I got to the peak in Nigeria. I got bored and I started to export. Did I make money? Yes. Did I employ people? Yes. Was it ad hoc? Yes. Is the money finished? Yes, for them. You get what I'm saying? So for everything, my first TV program, the money I made from it I, used it, to buy, I used it to buy my first camera. I used that camera to shoot my next TV program. The money I made from it, I used it to buy another equipment. You get, so it's like I'm just recycling the money. At least you're putting the money back into I'm the business. I'm putting the money back, but I'm not eating my profit. 
you might eat your breakfast tomorrow. I'm not enjoying it. You, you, you get what I'm saying? Yes. I'm going to round up on this note. I'm going to round up on this note. When we talk about Hollywood and the picture they sell, why the government needs to come in is because people believe what they see. They like make-believe. If we make pictures about Nigeria being at its peak, being a good country, people will believe it. The young ones who want to reach out and say, oh, Nigeria is good, you try this. When they reach out and they don't get it, there is a problem. If we make movies of us being arm robbers and killers, these young ones will believe it, and that's easier for them to assess. No, no doubt at all. Um, very quickly, because uh, yeah. we have been... Very, told... very quickly, just look, time up. Yeah, time but, up. Uh, please, I I'm going to come to you, but we just have to ask this question. Hold on now. Uh, to me, uh, uh, it's, it's a question that I'm directing at you, and I'll want uh, Dio to come in at some point, but you know, whatever your answer will be, please don't let it exceed one minute. Okay. Fact is that um, companies like Dio's, you know, uh, they, they, they put in money. Uh, you know, they put in money, they give um, entertainers money, they organize shows and all of that. But you look at the way the, should I say the support they give to the industry, I would say would appear to be a one-off most times, you know, not sustaining, you're organizing shows, they sponsor shows, they give you money for shows, and it ends there. So how can the private sector too come in? I mean, private companies like Etisalat, for instance, come in, invest in, you know, develop talents and, uh, you know, ensure that not, these talents don't just grow, but that they become not just the mainstay of the economy, but at least a very vital part of the economy and that they don't just die. Yes, I would say um, that's why I'm seated here. I like programs like this that educate. Because at, at every point in, in this, in this um, seminar, people have picked up points that they would run with. So, so for companies like um, Etisalat, um, MTN, um, Glow and the rest, I think just, it, it, they should involve as their social responsibility to educate people, to educate talents. Because showing up here, we do this, all of us, like one off show, people go. And it, like they say, give a man a fish, he eats for a day. Teach a man how to fish. You have, you have actually fed his generation. So that's what they should do. They should, if that, if that, it just small, it, it might not be really big. If it's, if it's about promotion, promoters, you can organize the shows and, and, and seminars just for promoters. Bring someone that has done it over time to come and chase little secrets. If it's about songwriting, they should bring people that have written songs for years. Well. Just come, just even if it's one hour, share your ideas. So people, people that want to take this thing as a lifelong job. Very well. Very well. Dio, you have something to say before I go to that man over there. Yeah, real quick. That be, beyond the endorsements and what have you that you give to, uh, you know, you give to the industry, don't you think you should go beyond that? We do go beyond that. Now, whether, we, whether the general public care about it is a different scenario, right? So we have a lot of corporate social responsibility platforms we do. We, we do education. Um, we do um, health as well. Um, but also, even with the talent that we have currently, let's say as ambassadors or, or whatever, we encourage them to diversify, right? So um, we're also part of their success stories in the diversification that they choose. Um, so someone like uh, one of our major ambassadors is not only doing music, he's doing other stuff as well, and which is generating major revenue. And I'm still talking about digital. So how well can we diversify? We've created a brand from your music. How can you leverage your brand to monetize content on a, not a totally different aspect, right? So nothing stops a Timmy Dacolo from getting on the phone and creating a service and saying, look, my fans can reach out to me every day. You're making your own money. And the fans are getting what they want because they have that connection, right? So I, I don't want to talk too much about okay, that. Okay, okay, yeah. Uh, Files, I'm going to come to you. I'm still going yeah, to come still to you. Going well, but let's, to come to yeah, I'm going to come to them, but let's take, um, no. Yeah, let, let's hear from you, please. Yes, this man. You want to give him? Okay. Okay, let's. Here's the mic. Two. Oh, we'll, we'll. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. My name is Larry Falano. I'm a filmmaker. Larry Falano. Yes, don't worry, we're not related. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a filmmaker. Yeah. Um, I don't have a question, but I need to correct in the conception, especially with um, 
my younger brother here, and Bovi. Number one, to Bovi. To Bovi. Government don't create structures. Structures are created by practitioners and stakeholders. Okay. I believe you're a comedian and you have a guild or an association that you all work with. Please, can you project? You have a guild or an association that you work with. You create a structure within yourself so that when an external body wants to deal with any member of you, exactly. they go through that guild or association. That's just a correction. Then, for false, my younger brother, as a filmmaker for over 20 years, you have a complete misconception of Mopicon. Sir. Mopicon, and I'm glad the subject came up. Because so many youths, especially new filmmakers, or let me put it in code, so-called new Nollywood. So-called. Yes, Please new Nollywood. On. I will say categorically, there is no new Nollywood, but one Nollywood. And there will always be one Nollywood. We met some people there. You are meeting us here. And some people are going to come behind you to meet you there. It will always be Nollywood. Mopicon stands for Motion Pictures Practitioners Council. It does not regulate films. You do not have to be a member of Mopicon to shoot a film. It does no, you don't, excuse me, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. You do not have to be a member of Mopicon to shoot a musical video. It's got nothing to do with musical video. But it is to regulate the professional conduct of stakeholders and practitioners. Not to regulate how you shoot your film, what you use to shoot your film, where you want to shoot your film. It is not. And that Thank is you. the misconception Thank that is going on. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, Fals, you're going to react. Um, let me take from you. What yes. of me? Uh, I, I am, I'm <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm standing not, already. Not you, sir. Him. Um, him. Yeah, okay. him, sir. You like my intervention, if you will listen to me. Oh, sir? Okay, uh, uh, Mr. Jobo from, from NCC. NCC. Uh, you yeah. would like to listen to me, please. I, I'm, so, I'm sorry, sir. I'll listen to you, but okay. I'm saying... Is he from EFCC? Huh? Um, sorry. Can you, just, can you just hold on, please? Hold oh, on. Guys from I, I will listen to... Hold N on. NCC, not I know, EFCC. I know. I will listen to him. I will listen to him, please. Yeah. I will listen to him, but let him speak first. But at least read... No, Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's pretty amazing being here today. And as a matter of fact, I mean... Wow. That's the word. Um... <laughs> There is this saying. Oh God, there's no time. Stop the yeah. phone and answer yeah. the question. Ah. Actually, um, I'm so sorry. Give me a oh, break. Yeah, there is this saying that um, what makes a man is what he knows and what he can apply. I mean, you guys have really said it all, and I'm I'm really glad. Compliment to your unique style, each and every one of you. Thank you. And, and what I want to ask. Oh no! <laughs> Thank you. Can we take? I'm not done. Okay, please. In just ten seconds, can you just wrap up? I like. Yeah, literally, being the way I am, I'm, my name is Abiono Williams, and I've got all it takes. So what, what is it going to make me to be a superstar, as you guys have seated right there? Right the now? superstars here will answer that question. It's Thank me. you. Thank you very much. The phone um, is the beginning. The, the superstars here will answer that question, but let's listen to Mr. Mr. Tony Ojobo, please, uh, from NCC. Why do we have all these people every year? <laughs> when we come and okay. just... <laughs> It's okay. You're welcome. Okay. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. Yes, uh, sir. Quite a lot has been said about how government can intervene. Silence, please. One else. In this industry. Hmm. And I agree with one of the panelists that talked about enabling environment. You could imagine what entertainment will be today without the internet. And that internet has been enabled by the regulatory activities of the commission. As of 2001, there were only 50,000 Nigerians on the internet. Absolutely. Today, you're talking about 97 million. So the only thing that the government can do is provide infrastructure.
provide an enabling environment, then people that have creativity and innovation can take advantage of that and move forward. I just spoke during our panel discussion. Two of the network providers have paid over nine billion just on color tunes to Nigerian artists. Now, what has enabled that? The internet, ICT. So what enables it is the regulatory environment. Now, broadband is the next frontier. We are licensing four new broadband service providers this May. Now, what that is going to do is that 10% of broadband penetration has brought us to where we are today. Now, by 2018, we envisage a 30% penetration of broadband. So there's going to be a revolution for the people in entertainment because the speed of downloads will be faster and a lot more Nigerians will be able to afford the internet. So okay. the government has done that through the regulator, provide the environment, then let the industry take advantage of it. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll take one more reaction from you, sir. Um, okay. Chris, Let's, Chris says you want to talk. Oh, okay. Just, just hold on. Let's... Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Benga Shokefun. Uh, thank you, uh, wonderful panelists. I had a great uh, time listening to you all. Great um, contribution to the industry. Um, just one comment. I mean, I, I started in the industry when nobody believed in it. And I saw everything happening now. And I thank God for all that is happening in the Nigerian industry. Big up to the Nigerian industry. My main concern is I think that we're getting too focused on export. I mean, China is a big country in export, but they, they got it right first in China. We have 160, 170 million people. Let's entertain ourselves first before we start thinking of entertaining outside. When we focus on developing our talent by entertaining ourselves, we will get it right eventually. But the moment people are beginning to get into an industry because they want to go abroad, people are beginning to, 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 begin to make music for America. America didn't make music for us. So let's try and see how we can look inwards. Let's go into it. Let's do more shows inside Nigeria before we start touring the world. Thank you. That's just my concern. Thank you, sir. And the, the good thing, sir, is that there is a huge market here, whether or not we like it. Let me take the last reaction there. Um, thank you very much. My name is Chrissy Hidero. I quickly wanted to um, react to um, his thoughts on Mopicon, just so that people do not live here and they live with misinformation. Um, let's be clear about it. If it doesn't exist anywhere else in the world, it most likely isn't useful. It's as simple as that. If it, if it is useful, if it is profitable, then at some point, someone would have thought of it. I do not think that Nigerians are stupid, but I also do not think that the exclusivity of brilliance is Nigerians alone. If someone thought, that a Mopicon or a version of it was useful to any film industry anywhere in the world, they would have thought of doing one. Hollywood does not have it. Bollywood does not have it. It is not available in the UK. Therefore, it most likely would not have occurred to us first. The, the, the problem and why you would have people keep defending this draconian um, bill is simple. Some people seek to perpetuate themselves in the industry. You are a filmmaker when you make films. You are not a filmmaker because you were there when some people made films starting in 1993. You are not an industry stakeholder. You are not an Hello? industry stakeholder. Mr. Chris. I'm almost done. Yeah, you are please. not an industry stakeholder just because you were around. If you have made one film in 21 years, you are not my senior colleague. Well, thank we, you. Need, we need to understand this. Now, let's be clear. There is a lot that is wrong with Nollywood. Our guilds and associations are practically useless. I understand the desire for one body to sort of have some sense, you know, of a semblance of, of some, you know, call it what you may, some other. I understand that desire. Chris. As long as it is not a law, as long as it is not a bill, as long as it is not compulsory, feel free to do whatever you do. Chris. If you offer value, people will come to it. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you, Chris. Um, well, it's... Uh, sorry, excuse me, please. We, we have to round up. We have to round up. But, but I think he made, it, he made it perfectly clear 
that um, you know belonging to that organization is not compulsory. He made he made it very clear. But uh, but but hold on, hold on. That's not correct. Hold on. But one thing, just hold on, please. Just hold on. Um, I'm going to give you just 30 seconds each to say something. But one thing I want to say is this. The reason why the industry has not grown is because of the kind of, you know, disagreement we've had here. Today, P-Man is more or less like not speaking in one voice. And it's all because of the disagreement we have in the industry. So until people are able to come together and speak in one voice, I'm sorry, we cannot harness this talent and make the talents work for us. It's just as basic as that. So I'll give you At 30 this point, seconds. Right, can we just, just round up? We'll just round quickly. up. 30 seconds, please. Quickly, to correct his misconception. 30 seconds. Is your brother. Yes. To, to, to correct you. my brother's misconception concerning the Mopicon bill. Now, the Mopicon bill seeks to make it compulsory for anyone seeking to make motion picture work for economic gain to be a member of the council. That is absurd and that is a restriction on my fundamental freedom of expression that cannot okay. be encroached upon. Now, why doesn't the government, instead of doing this, focus on giving us that enabling environment? Somebody mentioned data. We don't have information. If my music is being played five million times in a week, if I know that, I can take that to an MTN, for example. Why wouldn't they see it? Because they can see the numbers. So why doesn't, why doesn't the government focus on that That's instead okay, of trying Polari. to regulate Thank us? Thank you very much. I mean, those numbers, we can work on them ourselves. Um, let's have your 30 seconds, please. It doesn't stop and end in Lagos. Go outside Lagos. Go to places where you not ordinarily have premium quality entertainment. Tap, reach the unreached. There are so many people outside Lagos who are super talented, who need to be promoted. More promoters need to leave Lagos. Thank you. Can we have your 30 seconds? Yeah. All right. To make the entertainment industry something we can look at to build the economy, I would say whatever talent or whatever you call talent, you must ask yourself the question if it's relevant. If it's relevant, then... If it's relevant, then it's a good talent. If it's a good talent, then it's going to sell. If it sells, then your economy will grow. Okay, keep doing your thing. Do it well, properly, structure your business. Know the business part of your talent and push it up there. And also give back to the young people, the up and coming one. Help them to discover their talent. And let us come together as one. Thank you. Okay. I will say educate, educate, educate. Education is very important. Thank you. I would say know your craft, know it very well. Every day, improve on yourself. For once upon a time, Nigeria did work. It can still work again. I would say take ownership and capitalize on the internet of things. Thank you. Bobby. I would say and I insist the government should have a structure that enables us as entertainers. If we have a ministry of arts and culture, and we have cultural dancers who dance to receive government functionaries, and that's all they do, then we don't need the government if we are operating by only our structure. <laughs>